Hello all, my name is Abhishek Mitre and I am again coming with the new topic which is YAML basics, yet another Mark language. In this tutorial, it would be a small video but having a very good content indeed, you will be learning about YAML which was earlier known as yet another markup language. Now it is known as yet int markup language. So it's due to introduction about YAML is it is a data serialization language. It's easily readable and writable, strict superset of JSON, I'm working well with the all modern programming language and it is very, very portable among various programming languages. So the couple of things need to be understand. The indentation, very important, colon, dashes, and case sensitive. And finally, uh, file extension of YAML is, could be YAML or YAML, that's it. Now, uh, I would start with the practical demonstration here. Right, for writing YAML syntaxes, we need a text editor, which could be anyone, like Notepad, Notepad++. In my case, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code. So, I have opened the very fresh file, new file, and chosen YAML as a, as a syntax or maybe kind of file I am going to create. Very first and basic thing is I am writing hash and welcome to YAML. It means the text what I have written after hash would be known as a comment because comments start in yaml with hash symbol so uh, i would uh, bring some information ready made information which i have uh, kept in the document somewhere uh, i am writing here for example this thing right so the entire thing uh, the paragraph complete paragraph is now known as text which not be processed or maybe uh, compiled by the yaml validator or yaml processor another thing is we need to understand what kind of or uh, the what kind of syntax we can write inside uh, yaml we can write three different types of data or blocks in yaml which are first is scalar if i would say uh, like this first scalar second is called structure type and third one is would be called um, collection type right so how to start writing this and definitely because it is a programming markup language so it would also support the data types as well what kind of data type if we'll talk about like dictionary uh, which supports key and value pair string type of uh, data type numbers inclusive real number float exponential hexadecimal octal and uh, whatever the number type are boolean which accepts true and false null and array right so let's see the practical demonstration of different different data types and how we, we can define the properties properties if i would say properties it means the collection of values or collection of uh, you know uh, the value key and value pair so the first thing is how to start writing the syntax into yaml i would say for example i would take an example of name name is a property it is not a predefined one it is a completely a custom name you can write uh, probably group name so the confusion will not remain here i would say Adju talk right i have created one property group name and assigned a value Azure talk for your information uh, i would tell you Azure talk is a facebook page facebook group very active group uh, indeed created by couple of technical people inclusive me please welcome you are also welcome to join this group I'll share the link in description, right? Okay, next property I could create. That is a string kind of property. How it is a string? Because it is, it is a, it is written, uh, written inside 
the double quotes, right? Even you can write with the single quotes, no harm at all. And without even a single quote or double quote, no harm at all. There is little slightly different, but fine. For the moment, it is okay. Another data type we can say is, I would say the how many number of uh, members of this group is, for example, member. Member is another kind of property, which is a number type. I would say 150, something like that. If I say uh, how many much rating would you give out of five? So rating is a precision number. So I can say rating and uh, the, any precision number can be given like for out of five, it is 4.5, for example. And uh, uh, if I'd say give a very, very big number, which can, uh, how many number of participants can be there in the group, uh, which is a exponential value. I do not know about the uh, real number, but it is very, very large in size. So I say uh, big number is a property name and I can give like, for example, our one e exponential numbers are given in such a way, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the correct number or not, but it, it's a pattern how to pass the appreciation number, uh, exponential number. So uh, we can also pass the date like uh, and, uh, group uh, form date when the group was created. So we can give like, for example, 2020 and uh, it was originally created on five and uh, prob sorry, six, six is a month, year, month and date. And we have created this group around three days ago. Uh, I would say six, right? If I say, uh, what time we have created this group? Uh, what time, for example, what time? Group creation date time. So we have to follow the date and time because time alone cannot be written. So 06 and uh, 06 and uh, HH MM SS in that format. Uh, half hours, for example, it is 10 o'clock, 50 minutes, and uh, probably 30 seconds. Likewise, uh, if we need to pass any kind of Boolean value, how to pass it? Uh, is it an open community? If I say my question is open for all, I would say yes. Uh, if it is a yes, then true. If it is a false, uh, no, it means false. So these kinds of value you can pass. And uncertain value you can also pass where there is no value at all, uh, can be kept uh, or can be left as null. So confirm, probably uh, null as of now. So this is a hypothetical example of each data type, how can we pass into YAML. Next stage is when, okay, uh, th these are the individual values, right? Individual properties. But now we, when we wanted to keep all these individual properties into a, a particular object, into an object, okay? So how to do it? Uh, I would say, um, for example, my whole information is all about what? It's about the community. So community uh, can be a main object under which the all data can be written. Uh, I, without even writing, I can just copy and simply paste it. And mind it, we have to keep, remember, we are using YAML so that we have to take this thing into consideration to give the proper spacing, right? Otherwise, it won't work perfectly. So that is the syntax of uh, creating an object. Now, community is an object whose internal properties are this thing. Now, uh, another question comes like, how would you access this uh, object's property? So very, very simple. Uh, if you would write community, uh, it has come dot and I have pressed control space. So it will give the internal properties of, for example, I wanted to see the rating. See this, it has come. So this way you can start accessing the internal property of any object. Community is an object dot rating is a property which is lying internally of community that way. Right, okay. Next, uh, what we can learn is, can we create nested sort of 
properties or nested uh, sort of objects yes we can very well create the nested objects and we can even create the kind of list inside an object for example if i would say community again or probably i can say community one community i have created at the top and uh, for example with some information like again i am copying two uh, properties from here right okay and after that i wanted to create one list of some group members for example uh, there is a category called moderator moderators so this moderator is not a single value it should not contain a single value it, it should be a kind of a list so how to define this list here dash signifies you are going to create a list okay so you can pass any value right uh, double in uh, within the double course uh, mod one rater one this value and if you wanted to give another value like for example um sorry uh, one space space has to be uh, you know given mandatorily moderate moderator uh, this time two and similarly one more moderator i can pass so that list looks like uh, having some value, more values moderator three that's it uh, maybe many it, uh, it totally depends on on you so that is the way how can you define the list simple one right okay how, if somebody would say how would you access the value of moderators which is like uh, residing inside the community one so again it's a simple one community one dot moderators and if you pass the value like zero or one something like this zero means the first moderator one two it, it's an index you have to pass in that way you can access your community moderators if i would uh, say uh, can we write another the moderators list in another way yes of course we can uh, we can change this list for example i am creating another list um admin right uh, in the admin if i want to create a similar kind of list but in the different pattern yes of course admin one and another value could be admin two and another value could be admin three admin three likewise there is no difference in declaring this way and this way both are same but pattern is quite different right okay now another one another concept is i wanted to write a paragraph with um uh, with maintaining the the kind of paragraph lining okay so uh, in generally in general uh, if you write something for example if you wanted to write a paragraph maybe inside this only okay and i want to create another another property or maybe another object here if i would say group detail so group detail is a kind of big paragraph i would start writing something about like uh, um let me let me copy something because it's a big text text so if i would say copy and paste so you see there are a couple of lines here um the couple of lines and internally if it will go for the processing so uh, that would be known as a single line right so if i would say to maintain it as a single line just ignore uh, ignore the uh, different uh, lines i would say here so by using the greater than symbol before the text the text written in multiple lines would be passed and interpreted by yaml as a single line means on the screen you can see the text is written in four different lines but when it will be parsed or processed that moment if the greater than symbol is there it means the complete paragraph would be converted into a single line so the output how how the output would look like output would, would look like like uh, i would copy this and this could be the output like this um uh, yeah in this way 
I hope you get what I mean to say. Um, this thing, and uh, you probably understand. Uh, you know, is also written on the first line. Okay, so that would be the output. If in case you wanted to keep uh, the lining, uh, spacing, lining, and everything intact, means you wanted to preserve the multi-line concept. So this symbol would be replaced with. I am copying the same property and writing it again with the different name. Uh, for example, group details line. For example, this one. So this ha symbol has to be replaced with pipe symbol. So pipe symbol is meant for when you wanted to keep your multi-line formatting intact or preserved. So that is the simplest. And now the output would be as is, as it is showing on the screen. Okay, I wanted to show you one, one great thing. So I am stopping YAML basics here, but uh, why we are going to use the AML is I wanted to show you one quick demo. Uh, this is our YouTube channel where we usually upload the videos very, very timely and almost every week, we have two to three videos we upload and uh, people are loving us. And in fact, uh, today it is 152 subscriber in few days. And this is, this is uh, my Azure portal. I wanted to show you why I am showing all this. How I am telling you about Azure. Oh, sorry, um, about uh, YAML here. So my another portal is this thing. This is my DevOps portal. Here you see, review your pipeline YAML. YAML is very important when you are going to work with Azure, Python, or any other different uh, programming languages. So here, this is a format of YAML has to be passed. And once you understand these basic concepts, what we have actually discussed in this, in this video has to be, uh, this will really help you to understand the whole difficult kind of YAML files and you can easily crack it. So we will discuss about, uh, we have separated uh, this, con uh, this concept, DevOps concept and uh, Azure concept in that separate videos. But for this video, we have, uh, we have learned enough about the YAML, how to start YAML. Although uh, YAML is not this much of a small, but you have to explore more about YAML, but these are the basic things. And one good thing I tell you, uh, I'm writing some of the online validators. How would you validate your YAML file after writing? Because if there is a, even a single space uh, problem or maybe indentation is not correct, it means your YAML won't work. So these are the online uh, YAML valid validators. You can go and just click on this, open this, any of the validator and uh, keep your uh, probably uh, I'll say this you can check your YAML there whether it is correct or wrong uh, I put it here no error your YAML is perfectly valid like this way you can just validate your YAML and go for the next development many thanks for watching this again I would ask you to please join Azure Talk on Facebook. This is a group. We have created this group three days ago, but we are receiving very good number of uh, participation in this. And please don't forget to subscribe Ingenious channel. And uh, for Ingenious channel, what you have to do is, after YouTube, you have to write Ingenious YT. That's it. And you are here. Right? So that is the link. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm stopping this video. Thank you.